From Crosby Village to your radio. You are listening to Bliss Radio. It is the station that offers you more, and it is, all, of course, the station that rocks every single Monday night. Right, if you are just tuning in with us, I've got my very special guest in tonight, uh, Dave Faulkner. He's an ex submission wrestling champion, uh, and he's now taken on promoting his own mixed martial arts events. Uh, Dave's going to tell us a little bit about Jagoku uh, Grand Prix Tournament, Pancrease, and what it's all about. Uh, can you tell us a bit about it, Dave? Well, firstly, uh, yeah, it's a Pancrase show. Pancrase, uh, I first seen it in around uh, 1994. It was before the MMA explosion. Um, yeah. And that's basically what Pancrase is. It was, it was MMA before MMA. Um, they did have a few different rules. They had, they've got open hand strikes. Now, a lot of people, as soon as they hear that, think, oh, God, slap and slap and you're going to slap. Yeah. But it's not like that. It's, um, it's because there's no weight category. Now, there's a reason I've done this. I've, there's three reasons I've done a Pancrase show. Firstly, nostalgia. Um, I haven't seen a Pancrase show since, obviously, the MMA boom. Yep. Um, the open weight. I've always wanted, I've always liked the... They call them freak fights. They have them in Japan a lot, where you got the little guy versus the giant guy. I was just going to say, does that mean, like, basically someone of my size, which, if, if you don't know me, uh, you haven't seen any photos of me, I'm not very big. I'm small, I'm thin. Mm. Someone my size could basically fight someone, you know, a, a massive wrestler, basically. Yeah, um, Gary Coleman from um, Different Strokes could fight Hulk Hogan, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that would be an interesting yeah, fight. Yeah, there you go. Like just death giving match. the <laughs> listeners a bit of visual. Yeah. Um, and we've actually got a few fights like that on the show. We've got a 140 kilo um, catch wrestler coming flying over, paying his own flight to come over to That's fight. So, so, that um, just shows the support straight away that he's... It, it, if it doesn't... Uh, kick off here we'll, we'll catch on in America there's already a guy who's asked me to co-promote the show with his own because um, uh, we forget on our shows so easily about things that have been before we're always looking forward to the next big thing and yeah. it, people do need to look back sometimes and um, some things and, that have been forgotten basically yeah, that and Pancrase that is one great. of them because um, again the, like I said my first reason for doing it my first reason of three was a nostalgia kick um, the second one is for the open weight to get freak fights you just can't get them I, I mean I was going to do one in 2005 I was only 80 kilo I was going to fight an MMA fight against the guy who's a uh, 120 kilo but <laughs> never never uh, yeah off. just never never worked the guy pulled but um, for whatever reason doesn't matter yeah. but I, I love seeing that fight. I love seeing the little guy but there was a little guy called Genki Sudo and he fought Butterbean the boxer who most yeah. people are familiar with um, it looks like a human thumb. But uh, <laughs> Genki Sudo's a tiny little Japanese guy. Yeah. About um, 60 kilo. So about, I don't know, 11 stone, 10 stone, whatever. So it's, it's, it's and he beat him with a heel hook, just with pure technique. And I, I, I love that element. It just um, shows you that the technique comes into play. It's not just all yeah, about definitely. who's the bigger guy and you know, yeah. who's got the hardest punch, as you said, yeah. the, the open fist. Yeah, well, it just, it, what it is, you can get into a, a brawl as well, a skill element. Um, you can get into a brawl with someone with just hands and you can get that lucky punch but with when it's to do with most stoppages and strikes from this will be from kicks so it yeah. takes a little bit more skill to land an accurate kick so um, nice. it actually makes for a safer environment it can look still look just as violent but it's not it's a safer environment it's, it's um, the fighters are being looked after a little bit yeah more. the concussion's not as heavy the, most concussions of course are they from one blunt force trauma which can happen in this but it's usually punches. It's yeah. boxers become punchy because they do so many rounds, and it's just that bludgeon. It's not the heavy shot. It's it's the constant hit on there. Yeah. So that element's gone, and also because it is open weight. Um, the other reason I'm doing it is because this dangerous weight cut. I mean, there's people out there now, luckily enough, like Paul Bentley, who've got this uh, weight cut down to a fine art. It's like a science. Yeah. But there's not enough people like him out there doing that and it's you, you find the more and more people dying or it's like dad until recently um couldn't see when he was doing a weight cut like become blind while he was doing it really and <laughs> yeah and it was just it was insane to see and it was well, taking that element away i don't personally like it a lot of people want to put that much heart and soul into it but i 
I want to stay away from that, keep it safe. So there's no weight cut. It's yeah. a, a nostalgia trip for me. And um, it's allowing the freak fight I've always wanted to see. <laughs> okay, well, speaking of the freak fight, um, who have you got on your lineup who, who, who you might know and, you know, what kind, kinds of fighting? Because I've seen something on one of the posts. Uh, like an ex karate champion or something can you tell us a bit about what ca- you know who you've got basically well when i first uh, started i thought all these mma gyms would jump on and at at, at present i mean we've got a, a week to go so yeah. the, the, if there's any mma gyms listening you want to get people on by all means hit me up but at the minute we've got 10 solid fights lined up that's good <laughs> but not a single mma gyms on it Really, we've so. got, a, but we've the first person I ask because he's a personal friend is Damien Woods. He's a uh, multi-time European, world, British karate champion, legend. He's in his forties, still hasn't lost a, uh, an ounce of pace. <laughs> and people have been trying to get him on shows for years, and obviously we trust each other. So um, he's he's obviously yeah. Now it's gone with yourself. now I've gone with the traditional mixed martial arts elements. He's fighting in a gi, and he's getting a Jigoku gi made. <laughs> which is my made up I'm a pain from for it um, same again it just shows that yeah know, they love it he's always wanted this opportunity because there's a possibility he could be fighting they're talking about him possibly fighting Bob Sapp right later on or early on next year or late on this year yeah. and he's fighting an American catch wrestler uh, called Joe Kowalski and that yeah that is his real name <laughs> yeah, so it's, he, not, it's yeah. not a made up name it's his actual yeah, name yeah, Joe yeah he Kowalski. definitely wasn't a, a cop in the 70s so um <laughs> But he, he, again, he's the same. He just loved the idea straight away and he, he's getting over here to, to fight him. So that was going to be a Legends bout because I had a system set up. I was going to have a, a Legends bout. So what? So obviously we're in Liverpool, so we've got a Liverpool Legends, Amy Mudd. Yeah. Um, then I was going to have a, a super match fight for a title. It's going to have two titles in it. It was a super match championship. Yeah. Um, that was going to be Terry Hayburn, who's a catch wrestler. I've heard about Terry Hayburn. Yeah, he's the, the he's from Kirby, our hometown. Right? So That's why I've heard of him. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> For those you're unaware, me and Dave both uh, from Kirby. If you know it at all. Um, that's how we know each other. We've known each other for a while, um, and that's obviously why I've heard of Terry. <laughs> yeah, but he's um, just absolutely. Um, I hate saying cheesy stuff, but he's one of them most lovable people you'll ever meet. Hard to go, gentle giant. Type yeah, of you can tear yeah. people's arms off. Well, mostly <laughs> his legs now. So. <laughs> But he was going to fight Lee Charles, who's a world uh, kickboxing karate champion. But Lee's got a, a, a really solid acting career now, and he's getting parts left, right, and centre. So if he gets rang, he needs to get on a plane and get off. So um, he's just got a great part just over the weekend. And um, so I totally understand that's so we can't fight. Now, the biggest guy on the show is Kenny Lester, Kenny Gorilla Blanco Lester um, from the USA. He sounds massive just by his name. <laughs> yeah, and he is. He's under forty kilo, six foot six, um, six foot six tall and wide. He's um, <laughs> an amazing specimen. Young guy loves the loves the sport, loves catch wrestling. He's also a pro wrestler as well as the pro wrestling. Yeah, and um, he was meant to fight the, t- uh, the number one ranked judo uh, judoka from our country, Matt Klempner. But Matt again has got other priority. Arrangements and he's got he's got a really good contract now in MMA. Yeah. So I I stepped up because Kenny had already bought his ticket. So I stepped up to Kenny. Look. Yeah, I heard about this. Yeah, one. you were meant to be fighting. Yourself. Yeah. Well, only until this weekend when Lee had to pull out. Um, oh, so yeah. So now you're not you're not actually on. Yeah, I'm not that. on it. Possibly if someone jumps in and challenges me, that's okay. Like um, <laughs> certain people that were mentioned recently. Yeah, I, d- I don't know <laughs> any other promo- promoter of any event. I, I can imagine uh, you know Dana White just being challenged and going, "Yep, I'm going to jump in the octagon." It doesn't happen, <laughs> does it? It's different. I mean, my last fight was only in December. It was in the same building, and, and I still train just exactly the same it's just I'm trying my hand at, at promoting for now yeah but, but obviously uh, you're going to be in attendance at your own event so if, yeah, if there's yeah. a decent enough challenge you're I'm, I'm going to be like the, the Vince McMahon for the night I'm going <laughs> to run around in my big oversized suit or <laughs> barking orders or everyone <laughs> but yeah. um yeah we've got it we, yeah we've got this giant specimen now he's going to fight Teddy possibly yeah. for the super fight title as well so oh, we so don't know I'm going to have a discussion with uh, Damien Joe Kowalski, that name again. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Terry and um, the gorilla. 
I'm yeah. gonna like gonna start sort out and see who's gonna fight for the title. Maybe have a match. The winner of each match will fight on the next one. But, I um, so it'll. So it's basically the it's uh, the Goku Grand Prix tournament. So you're you're hoping obviously after mm. this one on Sunday come and being a success, mm. you'll be doing more in the future. Well, yeah. Well, the, the tournament name has actually come from the we actually are having a four man tournament in it, and it's amazing how it came about. I was inviting all the top MMA gyms. But uh, there was a show recently in Liverpool called Tetsujin, which yeah. was strong style pro wrestling. Mm. Now, um, I'm going to try and use correct terminology so people know what I mean and I don't upset people. Yeah. So, um, strong style pro wrestling it was different from a legit fight show. And yeah. that's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> we, I had 10 professional wrestlers ring me up and say, Is this uh, hi? You can speak to Dave. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Um, I'm interested in getting on the uh, Jigoku. Okay. Um, is it a work show? Um, I'm not going deep into what worked. I'll let his work yeah, out. So I, yeah. I just said, um, no, it's, it's, it's totally legit. You know, so it's not like Tetsujin. I said, might look the same, but it, it, it's not. Nothing, nothing's friend, planned yeah, beforehand, basically. But me, uh, say. Yeah, with me friend, friend Garen Leather, I've given two tickets yeah. for the show he runs Tetsujin because he loves all this stuff all the, the Japanese based martial arts stuff and pro wrestling yeah. so um, ten of them rang me I've been left with six professional wrestlers who want to have legit fights now so because right. they they were the first to me I was like struggling for people to get involved I tried to when explain to people yeah. Moment, yeah so I've put these four who are normally pro wrestlers but they're all legitimately trained the old train. One of them, actually, two of them are even coaches in MMA gyms. Right, I see. And they so I've put them all in the tournaments at the beginning. And I mean, the show starts with two tournament fights. Yeah. And um, then in the second half of the show, we're gonna have the final, and that's for the second belt. We've got a Grand Prix title, which is a white stripe title. Yeah. It's like a white strap on it, Tony. Because the super fight title's got the black strap on it, so you know the difference. Yeah, so you know which one. Um, yeah. Spend serious money on the belts as well, so <laughs> you should so. look good. Yeah. So that's where the tournament part comes from. I was going to make the whole show a tournament. Yeah. But uh, next one, I might do that. Just put everyone in it. Obviously, and then yes. super fight. With the, this being the first show, you can sort of see what works, what doesn't exactly. work, what works more than what doesn't, basically, and obviously um, set your next one up based around that. Yeah, well, at the, see what I've got at the minute. Like I said, I've got no. Um, it's just it's crazy the clientele I've been left with. <laughs> it's because um, not a single MMA gym has has supported it. Not a single one. Mm. And I know that if I run an MMA show, it'd be different. But I think even though it's meant to be mixed martial arts, a lot of MMA fighters do not mix yeah. their martial arts. They won't do other stuff. They'll do they like to stick a with grappling show, to. or you get the odd one. They'll have a K one fight or a Thai fight, but they won't. Yeah. They won't stray, stay away, they won't um, stray from the MMA, a lot of them. So I've been left with um, like four karate gyms and a lot of freestyle wrestling, like the Snake Pit and Wigan, where I used to train. I've got a lot of people from there and I've got people from other wrestling gyms. Yeah. And like I said, I've been let, um, I've got six lads who've only ever done professional wrestling before all so having the first so it's going to be a fight. new thing for them as well yeah it's, it, and I'm just made, I can't thank them enough they've, they've, they've saved the day if it wasn't for them to be honest it would have been hard would have had a, a show to do but hopefully it'll catch on after this one and people see what it really is because you can explain all you want to certain people but yeah. they've got to see it it's got to be visual and the best way to see it is to actually get there um, obviously tickets aren't available uh, what's what's the ticket prices and uh, standard tickets £25 and that's for everyone someone rang me up the other day and said there's the kids tickets and I didn't to be honest there was no um, there's no difference in yeah that, it's, ju it's just 25 quid in um, so it covers me insurance as well then yeah. um, we've got tables of six for 200 quid that's rare I'm saying quid you can tell one of the scouts radio show <laughs> 200 pounds everyone knows for those yeah. of you who are, are not from Liverpool if, uh, we obviously we have listeners all over the North West and North Wales uh, quid is basically a pound <laughs> yeah or a euro <laughs> yeah, yeah or a euro yeah. Yeah. so um, yeah so 25 pounds for the standard ticket we, uh, it's two hundred pound for a table of six, yeah. right next to the ring. Oh, that's right next to a bar. It's your own bar, that one as well. Yeah. And it's four hundred pound for a booth of ten, with your own spirit of choice and mixes. Well, that's that's, that's not a bad price. Yeah. Also, as well, um, with all them prices Dave gave you, 
Uh, we're going to give you some details on how you can get your tickets and stuff, as well as we're going to do a bit of a question um, and give away two tickets free to the event, obviously. So once we do... Uh, once we give the question, uh, send us answers on a postcard, or if you want them to get through to us straight away, email us at studio at blissradio.co.uk. Um, coming up shortly, we're going to tell you, obviously, how you can do that, how you can get your tickets, and also how you can get a 10% discount if you call for tickets. DJ Smigger rocks. Bliss Radio. <laughs> Uh, if you have been listening, I'm here with Dave Fork now. We've just been talking about the Jagoku Pancrease Tournament. Uh, now, we're going to tell you where and when it is, how you can get your tickets, how you can get money off, and how you can win some free tickets as well. Uh, okay, so first of all, the event is this coming Sunday, the yep. 16th of September. Um, as Dave's mentioned, we've got 10, 10 uh, fights on the card. As well as that, I will be there uh, representing Bliss Radio and I'll be playing the music, which is ties in perfectly with the rock theme. Uh, yep. I'll be basically keeping the ambience going and, you know, keeping everyone in a nice, friendly mood and stuff like that at the event. Um, now, if we can, Dave, can you tell us how, how people can get the tickets? Okay, you can get the tickets. Uh, I've been delivering them personally as well because, as I said, it's my own show and I don't always trust the... Um, the postal service so um you can get them for me by ringing 07904133452 um i'm sure leo put on the site or something like that yeah that's yeah. my that's my personal number if you don't get me because i'm quite busy always leave a message i'll always get back to you um also you can get them on the day of the event a lot of people do get them so on the day of the you event you can get so them on the door basically yeah there's absolutely uh, no problem with that i've made sure i haven't um got too many tickets to overgo the capacity so that's for people to accommodate people turning up yeah. so that's what Anyone we've done turns up last minute yeah kind of thing. So, so people get in so obviously you know if you can get your tickets get your tickets ring dave um if you quote bliss when you call you will get a minimum 10 percent discount on your tickets obviously if you if you buy quite a few tickets dave might feel extra generous and give you a little bit more discount see how it goes um but of course if you don't manage to order a ticket in advance you can turn up on the door and pay in. Same again, I'm assuming, if you call Bliss when you walk in, you get a 10% discount Yeah, as well. and then that, that to anyone who's listening today, you, 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 you quote Bliss, and that's 10% on even the bigger things like the tables or even the boots, that's so not a problem. If, if you're paying uh, £200 for a table of six, you know, you're, you're going to be saving £20 because mm -hmm. you get your 10% discount. So but get there for 5pm because we've got to get two of the fights out there. Uh, we've got to get the first fight by half five um, sharp, so... So yeah, so it, is, it all kicks off. At, well, yeah, it all kicks off at five. Get there as close to five o'clock as you can because once the first match kicks off, you know you don't want to be missing anything. So get us. The, I'll be there myself from about half past four, getting set up for the music and stuff. Um, but you know, as I say, if you do ring for tickets, just quote Bliss Radio, or Bliss Radio, or Bliss. Uh, what was the number again, Dave? Oh seven nine zero four one three three four five two. That was me radio voice. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell he's done this before. Um, also, we are going to be giving away two tickets. Um, Dave's going to tell, give you the question now. Now, this question is going to be. Um, obviously related to the event um, anyone who knows the answer to this question email us in at our studio at blissradio.co.uk and by the end of the show tonight I will be announcing our winner who will win two tickets to the Pancrase tournament uh, what's the question Dave? ok so the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie Bloodsport from 1988 yep. what was the name of the tournament that he competed in? Okay, that's repeat it. Yep, and repeat it again, Dave. Okay, so in the movie Bloodsport, what was the name of the tournament they all competed in? There you go, that's your question. What was the name of the tournament that they competed in in Bloodsport? Uh, as I say, send us an email to studio at blissradio.co.uk. Uh, later on throughout the show, I will be going through our correct answers and we will select an answer at random and be given two tickets away also if you would like to get some tickets that number again dave is oh seven nine oh four one three three four five two there you go get yourself on the phone get your tickets get your 10 percent discount just go yeah 
We're going to have to talk for a second then. Just quote Bliss. Putting the personality back into your radio. We are Bliss Radio. Be on air. Be a DJ. Be Bliss. 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 If you ever wanted to present your own show, then Bliss Radio School can help make that happen. Learn from the pros, sharpen your skills, and be on air. Don't miss your opportunity to shine and email office at blissradio.com.